The Saw franchise may be famous for its intricate death traps, but it is infamous for its convoluted chronology. With the next entry in the series right around the corner, we decided that it was time to play a game and piece together Saw's complicated story in five minutes, sort of. Spoilers and copious amounts of gore ahead. Civil engineer John Kramer has a pretty good life. He and his business partner, Art Blank, have just found a home for their charitable foundation in the Gideon Meatpacking Plant. His pregnant wife, Jill Tuck, has just opened a clinic for recovering addicts. Everything's going well for John, until a drug addict named Cecil tries to rob Jill's clinic, injuring her in the process and causing her to lose the baby. Overcome with grief, John grows distant from Jill and Art. Soon after, he is told by Dr. Lawrence Gordon that he has an inoperable brain tumor. John reaches out to insurance executive William Easton and requests coverage for experimental treatment, but Easton denies him. Thinking his last option is gone, John attempts suicide by driving his car off a cliff. But miraculously, John survives, and with his survival comes a newfound appreciation for his life. So of course, the next logical step is to share this appreciation with others by placing them in elaborate, deadly traps. <laughs> His first victim is Cecil, whose trap sets the tone for all of John's victims to come. It offers him a chance to survive, but only by forcing him right to the edge of death. Cecil attacks John, who is smart enough to be standing in front of an open cage full of barbed wire. Cecil falls into the cage and dies. John carves a jigsaw piece out of his skin to mark this first failed test. The jigsaw piece soon becomes the calling card John leaves on all his victims, earning him the super imaginative nickname, the Jigsaw Killer. As the police investigate the deaths, Detective Mark Hoffman sees an opportunity to avenge his murdered sister. Hoffman hooks his sister's murderer up to a guillotine trap that offers him no chance of escape, a jigsaw no-no, then carves out a piece of his skin to frame John. It doesn't take John long to catch on to what Hoffman has done. He kidnaps Hoffman and gives him the option to become his apprentice, an offer Hoffman accepts. They use Hoffman's position as a detective to try and frame Lawrence, John's oncologist, for Jigsaw's murders. Detective David Tapp hires photographer Adam Stanheit to secretly observe Lawrence. John and Hoffman test drug addict Amanda Young, a former patient at Jill's clinic. Amanda survives her reverse bear trap by digging a key out of a fellow patient. After Amanda is interviewed by the police, she returns home where Jigsaw is waiting for her. Believing he has given her salvation, she too joins him as an accomplice. One of Amanda's first jobs is to set up a test for Lawrence and Adam. The pair wake up chained to a wall in an underground bathroom and must figure out how to escape. Lawrence does so by cutting off his own foot. Adam is left to die a slow death by Jigsaw, but Amanda takes pity on him and suffocates him with a plastic bag. Jigsaw finds Lawrence and tends to his wounds, and Lawrence agrees to join Jigsaw's squad because... Who knows, this twist was retroactively orchestrated in Saw 7. Later, Amanda executes a test that targets Eric Matthews, not that one, a corrupt cop whose victims are all gathered together in an underground facility and tasked with surviving a deadly nerve gas. Eric fails his test by giving in to his violent instincts and is left to die by Amanda. John travels to the Gideon building to live out his last days, while his accomplices abduct his former partner, Art Blank. Amanda is instructed to conduct two tests, but to John's dismay, she designs both to be inescapable. As John readies his own final test, he gives a key to his ex-wife, Jill, who knows what he and his accomplices are doing and tells her she'll know when to use it. The major pawns in John's final test are husband and wife, Jeff and Lynn Dinlin. Jeff is put through a series of gruesome challenges while Lynn, a doctor, is forced to treat Jigsaw with a collar around her neck that will explode if his heart stops. Before Jeff finishes his final challenge, Amanda reads a blackmail note from Hoffman. The note reveals Hoffman knows Amanda was with Cecil the night he tried to rob Jill's clinic. Hoffman threatens to tell John if Amanda doesn't kill Lynn. Meanwhile, Hoffman strings up both he and Eric Matthews into a test and forces Art Blank to monitor it while a timer counts down. Eric Matthews' ex-colleague, Officer Daniel Rigg, is put through a test of his own, leading Detective Peter Strom to think he is the Jigsaw Killer. Rigg eventually makes it to the Gideon Building, where he accidentally kills Eric by opening the door. Strom also enters the Gideon Building. Rigg shoots Art Blank, Art Blank shoots Rigg, Hoffman leaves them. Still following? At the same time, Amanda refuses to release Lynn after Jeff completes his test. She shoots Lynn just as Jeff arrives. Jeff shoots Amanda in retaliation, and as she bleeds out, John reveals this was actually her test. Jeff kills Jigsaw with a saw blade. How fitting. Lynn's collar detonates, and Hoffman locks Jeff in a room full of dead bodies. Strom is attacked by a masked Hoffman and left to die in a trap, but he survives. Suspicious that Hoffman also managed to survive, Strom begins researching possible connections he had with the victims. 
Hoffman is alerted to a tape from John saying he will not survive untested. Jill receives a box John left for her, unlocked with that key, which contains photos of the next test subjects. Hoffman orchestrates another test for five people who all played a part in a deadly fire. One survives. Based on a tip from Hoffman, Special Agent Dan Erickson begins to suspect Strom as Jigsaw's accomplice. Hoffman lures Erickson to its underground lair and plants fake evidence confirming these suspicions. Strom arrives and he and Hoffman fight. Strom locks Hoffman in a coffin, not realizing that was actually the safest place to be as the walls close in on him, crushing him to death. It's uh, yeah, it's gross. Hoffman cuts off Strom's arm so he can plant his fingerprints on future crime scenes and stay in the shadows forever. Reporter Pamela Easton somehow finds the blackmail letter Hoffman wrote Amanda and shows it to Jill. Pamela also tells Hoffman about the box John gave Jill. Hoffman demands Jill give him the photos of the next test subjects. The first photo is of William Easton, who denied John health coverage in the first minute of this video, which, let's face it, was a lifetime ago. William Easton dies at the end of his test, much to the dismay of Pamela, who was, you guessed it, his sister. What a crazy coincidence! Jill ambushes Hoffman and puts the reverse bear trap on his head. She reveals to Hoffman that one of the photographs in John's box was of him. Jill leaves, but Hoffman escapes the trap. Hoffman goes into hiding, while Jill meets internal affairs detective Matt Gibson and incriminates Hoffman in exchange for immunity. Hoffman abducts Bobby Dagan, a self-help guru who made a living off claiming he was a Jigsaw survivor, and tells Gibson he'll stop abducting people if Gibson turns Jill over to him. Hoffman tests Dagan anyway, kills a whole bunch of people because this is the final chapter and all bets are off, and eventually manages to kill Jill. However, Lawrence has been active this whole time, unbeknownst to anyone left alive, and he attacks Hoffman. Lawrence drags him down to the bathroom he and Adam were chained up in so many movies ago, throws away the hacksaw he used to cut off his own leg, and leaves the building. Game finally over. Just kidding! Because nothing is ever final, especially Maniacs and their sprawling array of awful apprentices, the overly convoluted death traps continued in Jigsaw, a story mostly set 10 years after John Kramer's death. We watched five new victims enduring a series of flesh-ripping obstacles and a desolate barn as part of a test being administered by Jigsaw himself? John Kramer's back from the dead? What the what? Not so fast. See, these unfortunate sinners were actually part one of Kramer's original schemes, and their game happened 10 years prior. Yep, we're watching a flashback while, at the same time, we follow, surprise, one of the survivors of that game in the present day, medical examiner Logan Nelson, a dude who accidentally mislabeled John's brain scan test results, possibly dooming John to death when he could have had better treatment. So the eighth Saw film is about Logan, yet another John Kramer disciple, doing his darndest to fake Kramer's return so that he can frame a dirty cop named Holleran for being a Jigsaw copycat. All the while, Logan is paired with his autopsy assistant and massive Jigsaw fangirl Eleanor, who's in the mix to be the film's main red herring. In the end, in the barn where we watched all those people die from 10 years back, Logan orchestrates an endgame where he and Holleran are trapped in collars fitted with apple cutter style laser beams and uses old tapes of John to pretend like they're in a game together. Logan fakes his death, gets Holleran to confess all of his crooked cop crimes, and then kills them off with the hot Zappos. Bzzzt. Where can this franchise possibly go now? Well, it can go directly into the capable hands of comedian Chris Rock. That's right, Saw superfan Chris Rock has revived the much resuscitated Saw franchise with a spin-off called Spiral from the Book of Saw. How does it fit in with the rest of the saga? Well, the only thing we know is that all the other movies have happened and that Spiral takes place in the same universe, but it's not a sequel to Jigsaw. Does that mean everything we'll see in the film is happening at the same time? Of course not. No way in hell. Even in the trailer, do the scenes featuring Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson's characters exist in the same era? Who's to say, though we do know Jackson is playing Rock's father in the film. In Spiral, Rock plays Detective Banks, lead investigator on a new series of elaborate, gruesome murders that target cops. At the scenes of these crimes, which include a subway tunnel where someone tied to a chair gets run over by a train, and a truck where something terrible presumably happened inside, are spiral markings that resemble the swirls on the cheeks of Billy the Puppet, which was John Kramer's little creepy cackling mascot. So why is the killer, or this team of killers, picking cops as targets? We're not sure, but it wouldn't be the first time Kramer or his minions singled out a law enforcement officer for their abuse of power, like Eric Matthews in Saw 2 or Holleran in Jigsaw. In fact, we see Rock's character with several others in a hallway here with ski masks on. Are they undercover, or were these cops actually committing a crime? The working title of this film was The Organ Donor. Is that the name of this new Jigsaw-style sadist? Does this psycho leave organs behind, like in this package Rock is about to open, or does he or she collect them like the bone collector swipes bones? Also, is Book of Saw meant to be literal? Did John Kramer leave behind a massive tome that contains designs for traps both old and new? We see a support group seated in a church. 
banks enter to talk to them, could they be Jigsaw survivors perhaps? The biggest Saw callback though happens right at the end of the trailer when we see Detective Banks handcuffed to a pipe in a grimy, gross room holding that trademark hacksaw. This would suggest that a Jigsaw apprentice is behind the murders, since who else would know about this game? But this is also where a Jigsaw playbook might fit into the story, as this new sicko might just have found Kramer's old plans. Which would obviously contain this nasty device that rips a person's fingers off. Yikes. That'll teach you to stop doing finger guns in photos. Thanks for watching. For more gory goodness, check out the trailer for Spiral from the Book of Saw and our picks for the 10 best horror movies. And as always, be sure to follow and subscribe wherever you like to watch IGN.